So, we will move on to another topic uh, which is essentially ensemble methods. So, what do people do in ensemble methods is that instead of using a single classifier or regressor, you tend to use a set of them right in order to make the same prediction. Typically, uh, these uh, end up improving some performance or the other of the of the classifier, right? Statistically speaking, more often than not, they end up in, uh, reducing the variance of your classifier, right? Uh, but that also ends up giving you better empirical performance at the end of the day, right? So we're going to talk about uh, several approaches uh, for uh, in, in ensemble methods. Uh, I'll start off with the one that's uh, familiar to familiar to all of us called bagging right so so what is bagging why did i say it's familiar to all of us So, bagging stands for bootstrap, bootstrap aggregation, okay. Do not ask me how they derived bagging out of boots, bootstrap aggregation, right. But the idea is very simple. All of you know about bootstrap sampling, right. So, all of you know about bootstrap sampling. So, what I am essentially going to do is I am going to create, you give me one training set of size n, I am going to create multiple training sets of size n by sampling by replacement and then I am going to train a classifier on each of those sets. I am going to train a classifier on each of those sets and how will I combine the outputs of the classifier? Sorry? I can uh, do a majority vote or average vote. Sorry? Well, that would end up doing majority vote, right? <coughs> so, average what? Average the if you can, if your classifier is going to produce probabilities for the class labels, right? I could do some kind of a weighted average of that probabilities. If the classifier is just going to give me 1 or 0, right? I end up essentially doing majority vote, okay? Does that make sense? Right? So, the idea is very simple. Backing idea is very simple. I am going to produce lot of classifiers. Right, so I'm going to call them Fi. Uh, um, right, so it could it could be a, you know, it could be regression as well. So it doesn't have to be classification, right? If it's regression, I just take an average of the outputs of all the classifiers. So each Fi is trained on one bag which I have produced from the uh, from the original sample like right? this is this, another uh, uh, back derivation from the word bagging right. So, it is bootstrap aggregation, but then each of those bootstrap sample you produce is sometimes called a bag right. <coughs> so, if I produce B bags then I eventually average by I mean divide by B to get me the prediction. And if I am doing it uh, for classification, I can produce majority vote or average the probabilities. Okay, the few things to note. Uh, so, bagging reduces variance, right. So, uh, in, uh, in effect, it ends up giving you better classifiers normally than uh, what you would uh, get uh, by uh, training on a single sample of the data right um, uh, or producing a single classifier. It is particularly useful when you are dealing with unstable classifiers right. It can take an unstable classifier and produce something that is more stable right. 
that is just a fallout of reducing variance, right. It can take an unstable classifier and produce something more stable. So, one thing that you have to be careful about when you are bagging is that if you bag bad classifiers, okay, the performance can become arbitrarily worse. What do you mean in the sense of bad classifiers? Uh, something that uh, has a classification accuracy less than 0 0.5, less than or equal to 0.5, How do you make the two classes. Sorry? How do you create multiple? Are you, uh, Each when you change the uh, data on which you train the classifier, right? You are going to end up with a different classifier. Oh yeah, but they are actually the same method, but you are training in different sets. on or different sets of data. Yeah. Or are you initializing different variables? You could as well if you want to, but that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. If you initialize two different variables, uh, uh, different <laughs> values for the parameters, you introduce an additional source of uh, uh, variance there, uh, but uh, you could, you could. There's nothing stopping you from doing that. It's just that you have to be careful about how you do the analysis. If at all you are doing a variance analysis, you have to be careful about how you do the variance analysis, right? Yeah. So, but that he brings up a good point. So, uh, in some of the ensemble methods that we talk about, right, the ensembles will typically be of the same kind of classifier, okay? The only way we are distinguishing one classifier from the other is by training it on a different data, right? Except for one approach, which I will tell you later, where typically if we use, we end up using different kinds of classifiers, okay? So, the data would be the same, but the classifiers would be different, okay? So, if the parameters are different, then averaging does not make sense. What parameters are like different? While initializing a classifier, if you are using different variables. But this is more about regression, but anyway, go on. I am not using different variables. It is like suppose you are using a neural network, right? So, you need to have an initial starting point for the weights, right? So, if I use a different random starting point, what? so that was his question. Should I use the same random starting point or should I use a different stand, uh, starting point, right? And even then going back to your question, right? So, you think about it this way, right? So, right, we are talking about f of x. Instead of that, think of it as Right, so, this hi will give me whatever features I want from x. So, even if I want to run each classifier on a different subset of the features, it will just be that, that will get enrolled up into the classifier. I can still do the averaging if I want, right. So, that is not an issue, but that is not the question he was asking. <coughs> Anything else on this? Okay. So, if you throw a bad uh, classifier into the mix, right, your performance can become arbitrarily bad. So, that is something that you have to guard against. Okay. So, bagging is a very, very intuitive, very simple thing. And a uh, couple of more practical things about bagging is that uh, it is, uh, you know, what they call embarrassingly parallel. You know, you can run how many ever instances of training on bagging you want. Right, some of the other ensemble methods we talk about are going to be inherently serial in nature. Right, so, you will have to run one after the other. Right, suppose you are looking to run this on many large data sets. Right, so, doing bagging is kind of easier because you can run it because one, one bag like a classifier trained on one bag does not depend on a classifier trained on the other bag in any way. Right, so, they can be trained independently and trained in parallel. So, that is the first thing. Ooh, okay. Next thing we talk about is something called committee machines. Okay. This is nothing big. Okay. All it says is you train a lot of different classifiers. Let us say we have some 10 classifiers or something, no, okay. should, all, should all the individual classifiers perform well on test data or do they just have to learn the training data? Do they have to generalize well or? Uh, so, each classifier you typically train it using whatever is uh, your normal training procedure, right? So, if normally you would expect it to generalize well on the test data, right? 
So, you would want to produce classifiers that generalize well on the test data, right. But um, I mean that is a call to be made, I mean if you do not want to test each and every classifier, sometimes people just test the, the what they call the bagged classifier, right. The, the combined prediction alone is something that they test, they just train uh, each classifier on the, the, on the data that is given, right and then they test the combined classifier. There are multiple reasons for uh, wanting to do that. So, one is that typically the classifiers that you use in bagging are not very powerful classifiers, right. So, the chances of them overfitting are low. So, you do not really try to do a validation on the test set to make sure that it is not overfit and things like that because the classifier itself is not very powerful classifier and then uh, you just go ahead and uh, test it on the test the combined classifier on the data. So, why would you want to test the combined classifier on the data? You would want to know whether you should produce more bags uh, and things like that, right. So, the nice thing about uh, bagging is that uh, because uh, you are using at any point of time you are only using a weak classifier to fit the data, right. Uh, not a weak classifier, but um, not necessarily a you know very strong classifier to fit the data. Uh, the chances of you overfitting is very small even if you increase the number of classifiers in in the bag, right? I mean, even if you increase the number of bags. I can do this for 10,000 samples, 10,000 such bags, right? And I still won't overfit. The danger of overfitting is no more than training it once, right? So that is a nice thing about bagging. I can keep making the classifier. I can reduce the variance in my estimate more and more, but I am not getting into any danger of overfitting, right? So that is a nice thing. <coughs> Uh, so, the other thing is committee machines. So, when, when you talked about guiding, you said it is embarrassingly parallel. What is the embarrassing part of it? You do not have to really think about anything, right? It's just, it's, <laughs> you do not even have to think about how, how, oh my god, how do I parallelize this thing? Okay, that is typically, I mean, it is a term that people use in architecture when they are trying to think of parallel computing. So, things like, oh, this is embarrassingly parallel. So, I can do, do, at whatever levels of parallelism I want and things like that. Maybe I am misusing the term, but uh, uh, but yeah, but it is really easy to parallelize, right. You can just run it uh, on different samples separately, yeah. So, what is embarrassing about it? I mean, why do you even have this whole parallel computing field to study something that can be parallelized so easily? So, I am really embarrassed to be working in parallel computing or something. I am just making it up, okay. <laughs> okay, committee machines. Can I go on to committee machines? Any other questions? <laughs> okay, so committee machines, uh, it is a very simple idea. So, I am going to train, I, I have given a data set and I am going to train a lot of different classifiers on, on the given data, right. And then I am just going to combine their outputs, right, based on some kind of weighting mechanism, okay. So, what could be the weighting mechanism? I will train a neural network, I will train a decision tree, I will train an SVM, whatever, right. I train many, many different classifiers, right. And then I have this set of classifiers that have already been trained, right. And I have to combine their output, right. So, how do I go about doing this? Okay, there are many ways in which you can combine their output, right. Uh, so, I am just taking this classification from uh, the, uh, the textbook, Elements of Statistical Learning, uh, not that I completely agree with it. Uh, so, in committee machine, suppose I have m classifiers, the weight I assign to each classifier is 1 by m, 1 by m. So, I, I treat all classifiers as being equal, right. So, that is called a committee machine, right. I have many different classifiers, I have the outputs of all the classifiers. I am going to give each one of them an equal weightage or equal vote, right. So, I call that a committee, right. Then we go on to something more more interesting called stacking. No, bagging is at the same classifier, same algorithm, but trained on different samples of the data. Right in committee machine, it's the same data, but trained on different algorithms. Right, so I have SVMs, I could have neural networks, I could have any, anything. Right. Or it could be say, it could be neural networks with different number of neurons. I mean, I am not saying that it has to be a completely different algorithm, okay. It is just a different classifier, 
it could be for different uh, settings of the parameters and so on and so forth, right? And uh, so st stacking. So stacking is like committee machine. So I have many, many different classifiers, right? But what I am going to do is instead of arbitrarily assigning a weight to each of the classifier, what will I do? What can I do? I could do that, but with uh, stacking, what do I do? I learn the weights, right? So that is a natural thing to try and do, right? So I have the prediction that is made by each of the classifiers, right? I go ahead and I learn the weights. So another way of thinking about stacking is the following. So I use each of these classifiers okay, to generate a feature for me. So, so this way it is called stacking. So I have a set of classifiers, right? they all output some, it could be a probability vector or it could be just a class label or whatever. Right? The classifier 1 comes and tells me, okay, I think this data point is class 1. Classifier 2 comes and tells me, I think this data point is class 2. Okay, classifier 3 comes and tells me, I think the data point is class 1. Right now, what will happen is I'll, my input to my next machine learning stage will be class one, class two, class one. Right, and now again it's a machine learning algorithm. Now I can run whatever machine learning thing I want. It could be linear regression because I'm interested in finding weights. Right, so doing some kind of regression seems to make sense. Right, but then you know problems with regression and classification. All of you know that. Right, so you might want to use it for classification or you might want to use some other uh, method for classification. You might want to use logistic regression for classification, whatever it is. Right? But then the inputs to this stage are, the, are these outputs of the first stage of classifiers and the tra target is the same target as the first stage, the same class label. Right? So one way of thinking about it is like you are stacking these classifiers one upon the other. So I, I first have some set of classifiers they produce features for me right the features are essentially what is the class what they think are the class labels right and then i learn to combine the features so i learn a predictor based on these sets of features so that's another way of thinking about it make sense then make sense Let us take a classifier FI. I mean, there, are, I, I, there are some people are actually saying they did not make sense. So I am trying to make it a little more explicit. Let us take a classifier, some FI, right. So it basically it operates on right, x1 to xp, right, and it is going to give me something, right. It is going to give me a real number or, or some, some class label, okay. So that is basically the, the function, right. It is either a class, it does classification or regression or whatever, right. So now what I am saying is I am going to train another H, right, that is going to take as input right, it is going to take this F1 to FM as input. So F, F, Fi is the first level classifier, I have M of them. And then H is going to take, H of X is going to take F1 X to FMX as input and it will produce a whatever is the thing I am looking for, real number or thing. So if I, if I go and look at the structure of H, right, to make it explicit, let us say I want H, H to be a linear function, right. So that will essentially mean that H will look something like. It is going to look something like this. So this is essentially saying that okay, I am taking the outputs of all these classifiers, I am combining them in some kind of a weighted fashion. How are you going to train that The same way I train uh, any of the FIs. Is that training data given? Yeah, the same training data. Yeah, the same training data that we had used for FIs, we'll use the same training data for H. Okay. 
maybe maybe not depends on the kind of classifier that you are using right i mean h is a completely different training algorithm right oh i can see your confusion okay so my initial training data is going to look like this i don't know okay initial training data is going to look like this this is my x and that's my plus 1 so corresponding to this there will be a training data for h which will be f1 of this guy so now i have only two elements here but this is f1 of this and this is f f2 of this and the same plus 1 comes in here right so i can i can do this right so the, the dimensions don't have to be the same right so this is stacking so stacking is a very powerful method and in fact uh, you can do all kinds of weird things with stacking in fact these these weights that i'm learning right i can make them functions of x as well what does it mean what does it mean if my weights are functions of x To give, uh, not type depending on where in the input space the data is coming from right i might try uh, want to trust one one output more than the other right suppose it's it's in say the top left quadrant of my input space then i trust f1 and f2 maybe a little bit but then if it is in the top right quadrant then i trust both f2 more and f3 less or something like that right i can actually do that also so stacking this function can be arbitrarily complex that's why i didn't want to write the linear thing first because it will bias you into thinking about uh, simple linear weighted functions but this h can be arbitrarily complex right so if you think about it in fact we are doing something like this in the in neural networks right so the first layer right gives you features these are complex features some some uh, some hyperplane is being learnt in the first layer itself and it produces a complex feature and the second layer takes all these complex features i have produced and it learns to produce a final output right the only difference is the first layer is not trained in this way right the first layer is not trained directly using the training data it is trained using the back propagation error or whatever is the training algorithm you use is not directly trained using this data so that's the difference right but we have already looked at things like this right these are all some kind of general additive models they are called additive models okay fine so any questions on this can we train a classifier directly h of x so or are you meaning that training like this just simplifies your the way you are doing like basically all uh, all your classifiers can be linear but a combination uh, by training a combination of linear classifiers you will be able to train much more complex classifier using stacking uh the basic idea yes is that i mean my classifiers need not necessarily be linear classifiers see the thing is so any of the classification algorithm that we are looking at right comes with its own biases in terms of what are the class of functions it can fit and so on so forth right and it could very well be that uh, across the entire input space the function is so complex the final function i want to learn is so complex that no individual classifier can actually fit it or if i try to fit it with a single classifier i might end up with something that has too many parameters so when i do this kind of this uh, layer wise uh, training so the i can get by with whatever i know as simple classifiers in the first uh, first stage right i could use decision trees it need not necessarily be linear so decision trees are simple enough i don't have to grow it all the way out right i can stop at some point i can uh, use decision trees i can use neural networks whatever i want as my fi right and then later on try and combine the outputs from here you have more than one level of stacking you could you could uh, given uh, <laughs> how much success people have had with deep learning i would suspect that uh, if you If you work on this carefully yes you could have multiple levels of stacking people do that i mean it's not that it's not that the reason it's called stacking is because people actually did multiple levels so you could do multiple levels of this um 
but then the question comes how do you group these things and so on so forth right do i do i run it on every do i give all my first level classifiers as input to all my second level classifiers or should i group them somehow to form a hierarchy blah blah so those kinds of issues would arise as long as you can address them uh, sensibly then you can go ahead and do multi level stacking uh, so one thing which i wanted to mention uh, sometimes when people want to run uh, you know competitions and so on so forth they do something very clever they don't expose the actual data to the uh, competitors they act give you the outputs of the first level classifiers okay and then the actual class label they don't tell you what the features were that they measured they give you the outputs of the first level classifiers and then they give you the class labels and then now all you need to do is train your second level classifier take the first level classifiers output as inputs and train the second level classifier and see what you can do with it uh, in fact it ran for a couple of years i don't know i'm not sure they're still running there is an ensemble learning competition which essentially does that this also allows you to have some amount of data privacy right so i don't have to release x but i'm releasing some amount of simple functions computed on x okay and then you build whatever classifier you want on it so it's hard for me to reverse engineer because i don't tell you what f is even i only tell you the output of f i don't tell you what f is i don't tell you what x is so it's very hard for you to recover you can you can't essentially compute f inverse right so so that's that's another uh, nice thing that you can so the reason that there are so many uh, approaches for doing this is because there is no one clear winner under all circumstances right so um, yeah so it depends so in fact like i said so stacking is something that uh, you can use uh, under a variety of circumstances you can even use it under cases where you cannot do bagging how so i mean i can use stacking when i don't want to have you want to give you access to data right so that is one case another case is the data set is small enough that uh, bagging doesn't make much of a sense on that right so it's not really truly representative of the underlying sample and i'm not really sure whether i want to do that in which case i can use the different biases given by my multiple classifiers as my uh, as my variation right to propose my ensemble so there are different ways in which you can do this next thing which i want to talk about which is a more interesting thing yeah uh, say i have one single stack of classifiers mm -hmm. and i run like i train them on a single data set uh -huh. and then i get the percentage of points misclassified and then i normalize them through all the classifiers what do you mean by normalize like say 3% 5% like i normalize them to oh, for each of the classifier you know what is the percentage of data points they got wrong okay fine yeah. i i normalize them to 100% yeah. and then i uh, assign them to beta 1 to beta n how is that different from learning this when betas are not a function of x oh that's one way of finding the betas yeah there's nothing wrong with that like when betas are not a function of x so how yeah. well should we redistribute the uh betas uh that is one way of estimating beta i mean what do you mean by saying how well should we redistribute beta i can think of many ways of doing that right take the classifier that has the smallest error and give beta 1 to that and make everything else zero what why would i even want to give weights to classifiers which which give me a higher error than the lowest error okay give me an answer why they are totally neglecting the possibility of them having a better chance no they could be making errors in different things so i might have a 1% error another guy might have a 3% error but he might actually be capturing that 1% correctly the one that i make the error on he might the other classifier might get it correctly so i don't want to completely neglect other classifiers also so that is the reason why you have to go about trying to be more clever about the weight assignment so i can do this proportional to the errors um in fact there is another uh, another more bayesian approach for doing this i can look at the likelihood of the classifier given the data and i can assign the weights proportional to the likelihood the higher the likelihood the higher the weight right and i can do some kind of normalization on that so that my beta sum to 
right? I could do that as well instead of just looking at the error. The error would be a frequentist way of looking at it, a Bayesian way of looking at it would be to look at the likelihood of the data and do this. I mean, there are many ways in which you can derive the data and so stacking just takes it to the extreme, says, hey, okay, fine, I am not going to worry about a specific algorithm, I mean, I am just going to let it learn from the data directly somehow, right? So, yeah, there are pros and cons and whole bunch of things. So, yeah, empirically, if you want to validate it, finally do cross validation and then test against all of these ways of generating the joint classifier, right? But then analytically also, you can try to analyze some of the variance of the uh, combined classifier and uh, you will end up hitting the, uh, a wall at some point that says that, hey, it depends on the characteristics of the variance of the data. So, that is basically, but that, I mean, we are entering territory where you can come up with whole bunch of things. Like ensemble methods, there are about like a thousand papers out there, research papers out there, which have proposed lots and lots of variations, right? So, uh, think of something and uh, before you try to publish it, do a literature survey, you will probably find it there. Okay, so that's 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 how how uh, crowded this space is.